Image. Image formats are used to store visual content like photos, wallpaper, screenshots, or icons and logos. There are actually tons of image formats, but the most common ones are JPEG, PNG, GIF, SVG, and WebP. Let's start with JPEG, or JPG, which are actually the same thing. The reason you sometimes see JPG instead of JPEG is because Windows systems in the past could only handle three-letter file extensions, therefore the letter E was excluded. So JPEG is the most widely used image format in the world. It uses lossy compression, which means it permanently removes some image data of the original picture to shrink file size. This is good for your storage since the small file size won't take up too much space, but it's not ideal for editing or storing high quality graphics. Because when you zoom into a JPEG picture, it will become pixelated or blurry since it is considered a raster image type. And just so you know, image files come in two major types, raster and vector. Raster images are made of pixels, which means they can lose quality if you zoom in too much, just like JPEG in this context. Vector images, on the other hand, are built from lines and curves defined by math, so they stay perfectly sharp no matter how large you scale them. Next is PNG, short for Portable Network Graphics. Unlike JPEG, which uses lossy compression, PNG uses lossless compression, which keeps all the image detail intact. That means the image stays sharp even after edits or multiple saves. But what makes PNG truly awesome is because it supports transparency, so you can make part of the image invisible, like removing a background, which makes it perfect for logos, UI icons, and layered images in design projects. But the downside is that PNG files are larger in size compared to JPEG. Then there's GIF, or Graphics Interchange Format. What made GIFs unique is their ability to show simple animations. They're widely used for memes or reaction clips, but they often look grainy or pixelated because GIFs only support 256 colors. And then we have SVG, which is a vector image format that can be scaled but won't look pixelated. And since SVGs are text-based, they can be animated or edited directly by the developer using code. That's the reason why it's commonly used for website icons, charts, logos, or any graphic that needs to stay sharp at any size. So if you view the image or icon on your phone, it will still look as sharp when you view it on a wide monitor with 4K resolution. And then there's WebP, a relatively new format created by Google specifically for the internet. It combines the compression of JPEG to keep file sizes small with the transparency support of PNG. That makes websites load faster, which is why it's starting to replace JPEG and PNG on modern sites. But the weakness is, not every app or platform supports it yet. Document. Document formats store all kinds of written content, like essays and reports to presentations and spreadsheets. The most common ones you'll see are DOCX, PDF, TXT, PPTX, and XLSX. DOCX is the most widely used format today, the default for Microsoft Word. It's used everywhere, from school assignments to office reports and official documents. It's easy to open and edit, which is why it's the go-to format almost everywhere. The only downside is when you share it cross-platform, the format or layout of the documents might look different. For your information, before the DOCX format existed, there was Doc File Extension, which is the older format used by Microsoft Word before 2007. So this Doc format created larger file sizes and was more likely to be corrupted and couldn't be opened if something went wrong. Like when you have an electricity outage or sudden force close. But with DOCX, Word can often recover part of the file even if something is broken, giving you a chance to still open and save your work. Next is PDF, which stands for Portable Document Format. Unlike Word files, PDFs are designed to look the same on every device. Even when zoomed in, the layout, fonts, and clarity stay exactly the same. That makes them ideal for things like scientific journals, ebooks, reports, or any document where layout consistency matters. But PDFs also aren't as easy to edit as Word files. You'll need special tools like Adobe Acrobat Pro. Another method is just to convert the PDF to DOCX format to make changes more easily. And then we have TXT, the simplest and most lightweight type of document file. It's basically like Microsoft Word, but literally just a text with letters and numbers that can be used for simple notes. However, this is actually useful as software logs in your PC as well, which is basically a software's small note of its activity and TXT is also used by programmers to write simple code or scripts before changing it to Python or JavaScript later. Next one, we have PPTX that's used in Microsoft's PowerPoint presentation format. Like Doc and DocX, the X version is the newer standard. 
These files are used to create slideshows, the kind you see in classrooms, conferences, or pitch meetings. They're completely customizable and support charts, text, images, videos, and transitions, and it has tons of templates as well. And finally, there's XLSX, the spreadsheet format used by Microsoft Excel. It can do budgets, schedules, charts, and even automate reports with built-in scripts. Each sheet has over a million rows, so you can use it for simple work or even for more elaborate one like data analysis. But this versatility comes with a steep learning curve because you'll need to understand complex formulas, pivot tables, and many more. Audio. Audio formats are used to store sound, like music, voice recordings, or sound effects. The most widely used and recognized audio formats today are MP3, WAV, FLAC, M4A, and OGG. Let's start with MP3, short for MPEG Audio Layer 3. It's the most widely used audio format in the world. And like JPEG and images, MP3 uses lossy compression as well, which means it permanently removes parts of the audio to shrink the file size. To be exact, MP3 cuts out frequencies that most people can't hear, especially those above 16,000 Hz. Also, if there's a background sound that gets masked by a louder one, it will be removed as well. That's how the compression of MP3 works. MP3 files also come in different bit rates, like 128, 192, or 320 kilobits per second. The higher the number, the better the sound quality, but also the larger the file. 128 kilobits per second was common back in the early days because it saved a lot of space, but it can sound muddy or flat. But these days, the 320 kilobits per second is preferred by many listeners because it sounds much clearer. Next is WAVE, short for Waveform Audio Format. WAVE files are uncompressed, meaning they store audio in its purest form without any quality loss. And WAVE also has high compatibility with any kind of software or operating system. These two reasons are what make it perfect for professional music production or detailed sound editing. But since they're uncompressed, WAV files are huge. A single audio file can be dozens of megabytes. That's why they're usually only used during the editing process, not for casual listening or sharing. And then we have FLAC, short for Free Lossless Audio Codec. Since it's lossless, it delivers higher quality sound compared to MP3, but with smaller file sizes compared to WAVE. But unfortunately, it's not always compatible or supported on every platform or software, like Apple's iTunes and also the Safari browser. Also, it's not as commonly used format as WAVE in professional audio production, but at least FLAC is still great for audio files or anyone who wants to build a list of high quality music without giant file sizes like WAVE, but better quality than MP3. The next one is M4A, a file format commonly used by Apple devices for storing high quality audio. It is encoded using the AAC codec, short for Advanced Audio Coding. Basically, it's a lossy compression method like MP3, but offering better sound quality at the same file size. But M4A can actually contain another codec, and that is ALAC or Apple Lossless Audio Codec, which is basically the Apple's version of FLAC. But the downside is that M4A only works best within the Apple ecosystem. So non-Apple users often convert it to MP3 to make it compatible on their audio player or software. And lastly, we have OGG, or more specifically, OG Vorbis. It is also a lossy format like MP3, but has higher quality for the same file sizes. So 128 kilobits per second of OG Vorbis is kind of like 192 kilobits per second of MP3. This made it popular among developers and platforms like Spotify, which uses OGG for streaming. But of course, many people may just convert them to MP3 because it's not always compatible with their audio player or software. Video. Video formats are used to store both visual and audio data in a single file, like when you film with your phone, screen recording, or movies. The most widely used video formats include MP4, MKV, MOV, AVI, and WebM. Let's start with MP4, short for MPEG 4 Part 14. This is widely supported across all platforms on any device, which makes it the most popular video format in the world. It usually contains video encoded with the H.264 codec, which balances good quality and small file size. Oh yeah, just a quick note about this H.264 codec thing. Most videos you record or watch are processed using codecs like H.264 or H.265. So the H.264 is the most common one and works on every device. It's not the greatest, but it gives decent quality like MP4 in this context. The other one is H.265. It gives you better quality with a smaller file size, but it usually only exists in high-end devices because it needs more processing power. So if you've got a flagship phone and you want to record in 4K, the file size won't be that big compared to the average phones. 
The next format is MKV, short for Matroska Video. It's designed to store many things in one video file, like multiple audio tracks in different languages and multilingual subtitle files. It's the favorite among video collectors and those who watch downloaded content with subtitles. But you also need media players that support MKV format, such as VLC, because a normal video player may not be compatible with MKV. Now we move to MOV, Apple's proprietary video format that's originally designed for QuickTime. You'll often see this format on Apple devices, especially when editing using Final Cut Pro. MOV files offer sharper and clearer quality compared to MP4, and this is because they use higher bit rates and less compression. However, that also means much larger file sizes. And since it is not as widely supported as MP4, it's mainly best suited for use within Apple's ecosystem only, which is why many people also convert it to MP4 for easier sharing or storage. Then there's AVI, which stands for Audio Video Interleave. This format was developed by Microsoft back in the early 90s and usually paired with software like Windows Media Player and Windows Movie Maker. Since it's an old format, AVI files can't compress as efficiently as modern formats, so it's gonna be bigger in size and lower in quality. So yeah, now it's already been replaced by the modern formats like MP4. And lastly, we have WebM, a video format developed by Google specifically for the web. It's like the video version of WebP, lightweight and built to load fast on websites. That's because it uses modern codecs like VP9 instead of H.264 to keep the quality high while shrinking the file size. So videos can stream faster and use less data. You'll often see it used on web browsers when opening YouTube, Reddit, and Discord. Compressed. Compressed formats are used to reduce the size of files or folders. The most commonly seen formats are ZIP, RAR, and 7Z. ZIP is the most universal and beginner-friendly compressed format. It's supported by Windows, Mac OS, or even smartphones. And you can open or extract ZIP files without installing extra apps. Its usage is as simple as putting multiple files together, like documents or photos, then shrinking their total size for easier sharing or backup. Zip files can also be password protected, which is useful for keeping sensitive files, like personal documents, company data, or login credentials. RAR, on the other hand, is like Zip, but a more powerful alternative to it. It can compress file size to be smaller than Zip. Also, it can even split one archive into multiple parts, which people find useful when sharing massive files like video game mods or movies. And to access RAR files, you can use software like WinRAR to do it. Then there's 7Z, a format created by the 7-Zip program. It offers excellent compression, often producing smaller files than ZIP or RAR. This can be handy for developers and system admins who want to archive large amounts of system images without taking up too much space. In the past, you needed to install software like 7-Zip on a PC or Z Archiver app on Android to open or archive a file in 7-Z format. But after Windows 11 update in 2024, Microsoft actually added 7-Z support when you right-click on a folder. Executable. An executable is a type of file that tells your computer to perform specific actions, like launching a program or installing software. There are many, but the most well-known is EXE, short for executable itself. It's the standard format for launching programs on Windows. Almost every software installer, launcher, or game on Windows uses EXE. You download something, double-click, and a pop-up will show up. However, since XEs can do literally anything, they can also run malware. Usually it came from cracked software or game mods. So when you install them, the EXE of that software can actually contain malware like ransomware or a keylogger, so it gets installed along with it. And then there's MSI, which stands for Microsoft Installer. It's another format used to install programs, drivers, and updates on Windows. But just like XE files, MSI files can also carry malware, such as installing backdoors that let hackers secretly access your device and bypass security entirely. And lastly, we have APK, or Android Package. This is the file format used to install apps on Android devices. Whether it's a game, a tool, or anything, it all comes packaged as an APK. When you download from the Play Store, it's generally safe. But if it's downloaded from random websites, not so much. Because usually it's a Trojan disguised as an app, which allows the hacker to steal your data. Web. Web formats are file types that are used to build, display, or support the content of a website. For example, like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But these are completely different from the file types you usually see. Normally, you see your files in gallery, music app, or file manager on your computer. 
But web formats are data and scripts that exist on the server instead of your internal storage. Just in case you want to see them, you can just go to any website and then right-click. After that, you can choose Inspect, and finally you can see the codes that I've told you about. And to make it simple for you, HTML gives the page its structure, basically things like text, buttons, and images. CSS handles the visual styling, like the colors, fonts, spacing, and layout. And JavaScript is the one that makes things move or respond, like clicking the buttons or opening the menu. System. System formats are the files that quietly keep your device working. You won't find them in your downloads folder because they live deep inside your operating system and usually stay hidden. Some of them are sys, log, and DLL. Sys files are used by the Windows operating system to handle system-level tasks like hardware drivers, like how your keyboard, mouse, display, or other hardware communicate with the system. If a sys file goes missing, those devices might stop working because they're not connected. Log files are just records. They track errors or events in a program. Usually they are opened in Notepad since they're saved in TXT format. They're mainly useful for looking for errors in the system. And lastly, we have DLL, which is a type of file that contains code, data, or resources that multiple programs can use together, instead of each program creating its own code for a specific function. For example, print.dll can be used by Microsoft Word and Excel to print, or like directx.dll for rendering graphics, which can be used by video games and also video editing software. By the way, since I mentioned about system and stuff, you might want to watch my video about every operating system explained. See you all in the next episode.